Welcome back to the Bronco Garage. I'm Monster Mike, and today I'm gonna to show you how to install the brand new MS2020 shock provided by James Duff. This shock just came out and we're gonna have a promo video on how all the great features of this shock work. But until then, if you're already buying them, I wanna make sure that you know how to install them without hurting yourself. All right, so this is how your shock is gonna come from James Duff after you pull it out of the box. Show you a few things. As you can see, there's gonna be a boot already included for no additional charge. And the sticker's gonna be already on there with the uh, wax protective covering around it. And then you're also gonna see that there's a zip tie and there's a note here explaining some things about the shock. Now, the last thing is it's gonna be an additional sleeve. So that sleeve there would be going in this position if you install this with one of the James Duff rear dual shock mounts. And then last but not least, there's an additional hardware kit that you can also buy at the same time you buy your shocks. Now, you won't be needing this if you buy the shocks with towers, arms, or a lift suspension from James Duff. But if you buy just shocks, you're gonna to wanna to select the additional hardware to go ahead and put those into position. They are a little different than what comes with the, uh, the, the older systems that came out before these shocks. All right, so at this point, I've already got the front end up and off the ground, jack stands are in place, tires been removed, and the old shocks are out of the way. Now I'm gonna show you how to put the new shocks in. Now you're probably wondering, why do I gotta know how to do this? I mean, they're just shocks, what's the big deal? Well, these shocks are gas charged, unlike the 7030 hydraulic shocks that James Duff provides. So they're very, very hard to squeeze together. So I wanna show you the proper technique, that way you don't hurt yourself. Now for this shock install, I went ahead and opted to get the additional hardware kit because this is an older suspension system that has different bolts than what I need to install these shocks. So here's what the hardware kit includes. It's got a short bolt here with these two washers and then a nut. And then it's also got a longer bolt with two big washers, a small washer and another nut. This is gonna be the one that goes for the top along with the washers and the nut. And then this is gonna be for the bottom if you're running long arms. If you're running T-Rex arms, then you're just gonna go ahead and reuse the lower hardware that came with your other shocks. Now, some of you probably noticed when I installed the top portion of the shock on this Bronco, that the tower that's up inside there's different than probably anything you've ever seen. Well, this is a new design that's coming out soon from James Duff. Now, obviously it's a little loose up here, but that's also gonna change once the design has been completely done and finalized. Uh, pretty exciting to see, you know, some of these new products that they're offering, especially when they come out with a new shock like this. So definitely stay in touch and uh, keep an eye out for some of the cool products they're coming out with. All right, so next I'm going to tell you the three different ways that you can install these shocks. The easiest, quickest way is if you've got someone with a lift, just take it down to their shop and let them put it up on the lift and it'll relax the suspension down. It'll let it droop down as far as it can. And then the shocks will literally just bolt right in place. If you don't have access to a lift or you would rather do this at home, well then you're gonna wanna buy yourself some 12 ton jacks from Harbor Freight. Or if you've already got something that what I like to call a frame stand, then that will also work too. But you're gonna need two of them. All right, so you're gonna need frame stands or the 12 ton jacks or you're gonna need a lift. Now the third option, this is the worst of them all. This is you just literally grabbing the bottom of the shock, the shock and pushing and pulling up as hard as you can until your friend, or if you're strong enough, you thread the bolt in. Now this can really hurt you. If you've already got pre-existing conditions like a shoulder injury or your wrists or elbows are bad, don't do this. It's really hard. These shocks are gas charged. You know, they're very stiff. So now if you've got James Duff suspension already under your vehicle, there's a really good chance that when you completely droop the suspension down, that it's gonna come down far enough to where your shocks are gonna be able to be installed. But if you don't run James Duff, or you've got more of a basic lift, you may not be able to get it to droop enough 
And it might be because you're binding up on something like your track bar or your drag link. Things like that actually prevent the suspension from coming down all the way. You also need to look out for, you know, uh, your brake lines uh, from the frame to the axle. Those can also be limiting you. And that's, that's not good because, you know, you could literally be ripping them off and you don't want to do that either. So we're going to just go real slow after we get this into position just to make sure that everything droops fine. This suspension can droop even more, but I've gotten to the bottom of the floor jack, so I have to do one of two things. I either have to raise my frame stands up higher, or I have to use a bottle jack to pump the shock up the rest of the way, because it's about four or five inches from actually making contact with the bolt hole on the arm. Uh, also keep in mind that your drive shaft is another component that could literally slip out. The two-piece drive shaft in the front, if it's extended too much, it could literally slip out into two pieces. So keep an eye on that. Uh, if you need a longer drive shaft, now's the time to probably consider that anyways, but you can articulate your suspension past the point of you know normal use, and then that would also cause the drive shaft to slip out. So you may just have to remove it real quick, or in this case, don't droop the suspension all the way. Instead, use a bottle jack for the shock to be pushed up the rest of the way, which is what I'm gonna show you next. All right, so I'm about to use the bottle jack to pump this shock up to where it will meet the mount on the uh, arm here and I noticed that the uh, bottle jack is just about a half inch too tall and I've got a couple options here but this is you know this is the process that you will go through and I, I wanted to show you real life here you're just either gonna have to raise the frame up you know about a half inch or an inch or you're going to have to you know pull on this shock just a little bit to raise it up by you know with your own force but I'm trying to show you guys a way to do this without having to do that. But just keep in mind that once you've got the bottle jack underneath the shock, you're going to want to use some uh, cardboard or something else like rubber to protect the bottom of the shock so you don't beat it up with the bottle jack. So I'm going to raise this frame up about a half inch, slide the cardboard in between the bottle jack and the shock, and then lift it up the rest of the way and bolt it in. All right, so I've got the shock in position, and as you can see, the angle's a little different than, than the arm, so it's gonna be a little bit of a fight, but for the most part, this should go in pretty easy. So first things first, I'm gonna grab this new bolt that I got with the additional hardware kit. I'm gonna add a washer, and then I'm gonna slide this in, but before I go into the mount on the arm, I'm gonna slide another washer into position like that. I've got it started, so now it's just a matter of pushing it into position and it actually might require you to remove the bottle jack out of the way. Once you have the bottle jack out of the way, then you just work the shock bolt until you get it in. All right, so as you can see, the trajectory of the shock and the trajectory of the arm are not on the same plane, so the bolt is actually struggling to get all the way through the mount on the arm. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna lift the axle back up so that these two planes are actually more in line with each other and then the bolt will slide in the rest of the way. All right, so we got the front shock in place mounted. Just get everything nice and tight. Get your wheels back on, get at the jack stands and everything out from underneath, the frame stands, all that, get the front end buttoned up. Then we are gonna move on to the back and show you how to install those shocks there as well. 
All right, so moving on to the rear, there's a couple different ways that you can install the new MS2020 shocks from James Duff, but I just wanted to make sure that you do a few things first to prep for that, because uh, once you get in the heat of battle, you don't want to stop. You want to get the wheels off, you want to get the old shocks removed, and of course you're going to be using the frame stands again, and you'll see that we've actually used the frame stands on a heavy duty bumper that's attached to the frame, and uh, that allowed us to drop the axle just a little bit more. Either way, you either go out to the frame horns, or if you've got a heavy duty bumper that's secured really well, you can use that too. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the bottom of the shock can go into the shock mount on the axle housing. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the lower mount fits inside the shock tab on the axle. If it doesn't fit, then you're gonna to wanna to grab a hammer and some type of tool to basically spread the tangs back out on the tab and then test fit them until it finally fits in there. Then you're gonna mount the bottom half of the shock first and then we're gonna show you how to do the top. If you're running the James Duff dual shock mounts in the rear, you're gonna to need to use the secondary sleeve that's provided with the shock. And let me show you how to install that. It's a really quick way. And this is how I do it. I think uh, you'll like this too. Simply take the end and slide it over the stud. And then as it stops right there, just push against the shaft until the sleeve slides out. And then grab the secondary sleeve and put it in position. As you can see, I've installed the shock from the bottom mount first. Now that's not required on every shock, but this happens to be a long travel version, so I can't get the axle to droop down low enough to get it to mount from the top and then simply just bolt it in. And I can't get enough room between the bottom of the shock and the ground to use a bottle jack. Now there's probably ways to do that, but uh, uh, that, would do, that would require jacking the truck up higher or uh, using some type of lift. But in this case, I'm gonna show you an alternative method uh, because you certainly can use the bottle jack. That does work just like I showed you on the front. Again, if you have a regular travel shock, you should be able to just lower the, the axle like I showed you in the front. Now, what I'm gonna show you here is I'm gonna use the force of gravity and my, my body weight to push down on this shock. I'm gonna push it down further than I need to so when I finally release, as it's coming back up, I'm going to go ahead and mount it on one of these points. Now, if you're going from a dual shock mount to a single shock mount, just remember, you're always gonna to go to the forward mount on the axle, which would mean you'd use the forward mount on the shock mount on the, on the frame as well. As I mentioned, you can use a bottle jack in the back, but I don't prefer using that method or even a regular floor jack because the shock is actually at an angle. Where in the front, it's straight up and down. At an angle, it makes it really hard to get the bottle jack to stay planted as you're pushing up on it. So that's why I prefer the method of using gravity and your body weight on the back and just pushing down on the shock. And as you can see, that method works pretty well. And even if you don't get it the first time, it's it's not that hard to just go and try again and then you'll nail it. So keep that in mind if you do want to use the bottle jack that it may be more troublesome than just trying this method. All right, everyone, that concludes how we install the new James Duff shocks that are built by Eibach right here in America. They're really a great product and I don't want you guys to hurt yourselves. So that's why I'm taking this time to show you how to install them. Just remember, if you've got a long travel shock you're putting on your Bronco, that a lift is gonna help, but you're still gonna need a little more help like with a bottle jack or in the back, you know, obviously using your body weight. So if you're using regular length shocks, this is gonna be no problem, just relax the suspension and bolt them on. Now, also keep in mind that we've got some really great uh, stuff coming from James Duff. Uh, they've actually got these new towers for the front. They're gonna work great with these new shocks. And they're also gonna be coming out with a brand new lift. Uh, they call it the Duck Tough. It's just incredibly modern and uh, has some really great control. Also, you're gonna see these shocks work on not only the early Bronco, but full-size Broncos, the Bronco 2s, Rangers, all that kind of stuff is gonna tie in as well. So don't forget to subscribe. Please leave a comment below. Love to get your guys' feedback. And of course, we've got tons of videos coming. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll catch you next time.